Village from Writers first. Check out my really cool shirt. Second off, I did want to try and do something. I hope I can make this work out. I'm going to change my screen and record while I read this uh, message that we got from Akuma Musu um, on Writers. I feel like I'm not a good writer because I can't focus long enough to do a full book. I can do a few paragraphs or a few one-liners, but I can't seem to progress. And then there's a frowny face. Um, give me a second here. Glasses off to get rid of the reflection. So one thing that um, a lot of people get sidetracked or distracted by is the fact that they're trying to, you know, do so much. Oh, I can't write, you know, I can't write an entire book. I just can't focus long enough to do that. One of the things that we don't remember because, you know, culture is such, lives such a short time is that it used to be that the books didn't exist. You know, it wasn't until, um, you know, after Shakespeare's time that books actually became a thing. So when writing was first started, it was poetry. And yes, there was like lengthy poems like the Iliad and the Odyssey, um, you know, different things like that. Beowulf was an example, but they weren't novels. They were poems. And one of the one of the most popular forms of poetry for for many centuries was the sonnet, which is only 14 lines with 10 syllables in each line. So it's a, you know 140 syllables. Did I get that right? Hold on. Okay, it was 14 lines. I just had to double check because in my brain for just a second I was like, oh maybe it's 16. But 14 lines, 140 syllables, and that was it. That was the main form of communicate, you know, like narrative. In those, time, in those times for a long time. And then, you know, you got into dramas and, and plays. Um, and then eventually, much later on in history, we get into the novelization. You know, short stories were, were big for a while, and then suddenly novels came along and they became the real deal. So when we think about that, we need to understand that, you know, just because, you know, everybody's reading novels doesn't necessarily make it that that's what we have to do. So, with that in mind, how do we get past the point of I can't write a novel to getting, you know, learning to accept what you can do? All right, so what can we do? Let's start with, you know, a few basic steps, three steps that we're going to focus on. The first step is this. What can I do today? You know, put, give yourself a daily goal of what you think you can accomplish and what you want to accomplish to reach your larger goal. You know, instead of saying, I can't write a novel, think to yourself, what can I do today to progress towards what I want to accomplish? All right, so maybe it's only a sentence. You know, you mentioned a one-liner. You know, you can think of a great one-liner. Okay, today I just want to think of maybe five good one-liners that I can put into a narrative of some form. Maybe it's, you know, to write a short story. Um, flash fiction is a huge thing. Um, you know, I'm actually waiting to hear back. I did a 35 word challenge for a writing group in my area that's celebrating its 35th anniversary. So it's a 35 word story, and that's all. Um, maybe you should work, you know, maybe you can focus on something like that. All right. Now that we've thought about a daily goal, you know, setting that daily goal, what is your short, you know, your mid range goal? Let's say every week you want to accomplish something. So, you know, each day maybe I will focus on a, a small part of a larger narrative. Or maybe I will try and create a collection of flash fiction. Something along that line that is a building on of what you've already accomplished with your daily goals. So we've got uh, daily goals, we've got weekly goals, and now let's think about something longer term. How can I turn what I've put together in those daily and weekly goals into something larger that I can present to the world. Um, it doesn't have to be anything that you know goes out to the larger world. You don't have to publish a book. You don't have to um, put anything out there that you're not ready for the world to see. But I do want you to focus on what can you do that will let you um, reach a larger goal. And that way you're not focused on what, it, what, it, what you're not doing, but rather what you are doing. And that's the biggest part of overcoming that fear and doubt. What can I accomplish versus what, uh, what can't I accomplish? All right, so now that we've focused on those three parts, you know, your, goal, your, your project now is to move forward and see what you can accomplish for yourself rather than focusing on what you can accomplish. Good luck out there. Um, I was, my name again is Billy. Um, have a wonderful time and good luck with that.